Hello, Rims of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery of Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 280. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Well, sweetheart, it's a crisp morning here in the Ozarks, and it uh, looks like on the extended forecast, they're saying there's a little bit of chance for snow on Monday. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be 80 tomorrow, but we're going to have snow on little Monday. little chance of snow. Of course, so. I, I've been watching you on when you watch the evening weather. Because you're you're seeing up in Iowa and all that, they're getting they're getting snow, and you're thinking, I got snow envy. So. <laughs> well, I have I've always loved snow, and I don't know if that part of that is because snow provided safety when I was a kid. You know, if there was a lot of snow, then you wouldn't be able to go somewhere. I don't know exactly why it's so comforting to me, uh, but anyway, I don't want roads to be bad for folks and stuff. So, but well, I I get a little happy if I see there's a, a chance we might get to watch some snowflakes fall. <laughs> well, I think one of the things I've always loved to sit on our back porch and watch it snow and watch the deer out there and everything. Mm-hmm. There's just something really peaceful about that. Well, God designed His uh, creation to bring us peace. You know, it's supposed to it's supposed to be peaceful. God's God's He's Jesus is a Prince of Peace, so we should be able to flow in that peace, even when circumstances are bad. And that's what that's some good news that I think that we can share today. Is I, I think what's coming. Um, I know, Mike. It looks like everything's just going to hell in a handbasket. But I have got hope for something that God's getting ready to do, and I'll I'll talk about that here in a minute. Do you have anything you want to say first? Or? No, we uh, progress is going on the building. Uh, we've got a few things that have got to be done on on Thursday, and, uh, and in fact, Thursday I'm meeting with another contractor to see about uh, when they can start on the other side, and and uh, hopefully here within a a week or so, we can actually start moving and setting up some offices over there and yeah, kind of excited about that. It is exciting. And to, to see how it's going to turn out, I'm kind of getting it in my head, you know, how it's going to look. And I I just want it to be like we've got it fixed here to where people come in and feel like they're at home. They are. And it's funny, you know, I, I, I kind of, every every contractor and stuff, you know, what are you guys going to do here? And I try to share the vision. They kind of scratch their head. Well, well, we've not heard anything like this <laughs> <laughs> We've not heard anything like this before, but uh, I, I think God is, we, we have to think outside the box, mm-hmm. especially when ministering to the remnant, because uh, I, I think it's a special call. And I think it, and I, I, I go back to what Mary Ann Brown said years ago. She said what, what God showed her, that the church will look nothing like it does uh, today, mm-hmm. that uh, that God is, you know, he I think a lot of things we have gotten put into this mold that's not necessarily a biblical mold. It's a mold that has been with our culture, and we just do things because we do things, whether they're effective or not. And God is really shaking all that right now. Well, I think I think there's a a big problem with the uh, seeker friendly movement, all that that's gone on. I think what it's done is it, it's almost established churches to where they're like a you know a country club or something. You go be a part, and people are excited about being a part. Um, they have all these, you know, these things, and, I, and I'm not saying that there aren't aren't good things going on because I think even in in bigger churches and things, I'm I'm seeing, you know, things that they uh, God has used them for. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying for on a personal level to have a personal relationship with God, um, it's it's almost like it's it's anti that, you know, it's set up to where where um, I I just think. God is sad about it. That's that's you? what I get when I was praying and talking to him this week is that that he wants communion with his people. He wants a relationship and I think without meaning to, it's been set up in a way to where it's very difficult to and do that. I think we've even changed worship to where it's how it makes us feel rather than giving him honor and Well, glory. and I Just think that's I think that's a lot of it and um, I wanted to talk about several things sure. this morning that I'd heard during the week when I was praying. Um, I felt like God said, "You're, you know, we're uh, approaching the eleventh hour." Which, you know, I've always heard that term, and it means the last possible moment for for doing something. And I think that I think that God's people are praying. You know, oh, a lot too. of people are saying, "Okay, this is the end." Uh, you know that that we're going right into the bad stuff. You know the 
the one world order's taken over and things like that. Well, I can tell you guys, I don't feel like that. I don't. I I think that there's there's things going on. I think the plans are still there, like they always have. But you know what the difference is? I believe, Mike, is that years we've known this for years and years and years. We saw it; it was in our face, and we had to deal with it a long time ago. Most people are just now waking up. Mm-hmm. I think the that God has used this virus to cause people to to see this stuff. You know, back back when I first came out of my bondage. There wasn't anybody talking about um, that that we could find hardly. I mean, we eventually were seeking to find other people. You ever heard of somebody saying judgment's coming to America? And we and we would start to you know look around and find different different places. But for the most part, unless you listen to something other than the regular media. You don't know the things. You don't know these things have been going on, guys. These no, horrible, so much. these horrible things that are starting to come out, and and uh, people are talking about. They've been going on forever, you know. And I, I, when I was watching the uh, um, interview that the president did, supposed to be a town hall, but it was mostly the you know the news anchor that was asking questions, and she she made a point of saying this about. Uh, QAnon and that you know wanted him to say do you believe that there are are high-ranking democrats that are pedophiles and uh are satanists however it was worded and i i've always just i cringe when i hear that because i dealt with that so much when i was coming out of the mess that i was in and had to face all that of course it sounds like it's insane but these people are insane it it's it's so hard to believe you know, like you could say that to anybody and they'd shake their head. You honestly believe that there are people doing this kind of horrible stuff? Surely there is not. Surely this is just a myth. And I understand that. But well, the truth of it is, is is once it starts rolling out and once you see a little bit of it, you can't ever unsee it. You you will forever look look at life and everything around you through that scope of what you've seen with your eyes because it you know for some people this would be well i've heard these people say it and i've heard you know a lot of people say that this is going on we saw it we We saw saw it with our eyes we heard it with our ears there was no denying it um well they need to go talk with people like russ distars that's been getting kids out of cages and dealing with the occult leading up to some very high political things or craig sawyer or so many other that are, that are going around the world rescuing kids. And what's, what I have seen interesting is you see it in the news until the trails start to lead to Washington, and all of a sudden they go silent. Mm-hmm. Well, they just, they absolutely cover it. You know, that's one of the things that I want to, uh, I don't want to lose my pace here. Um, I'll go back and catch that. But I, uh, when God was talking to me about this 11th hour, I, th- I think we're, we're passing it. I think I think we're in past midnight, and what God's been talking to me about is m- morning's going to break. There's, and I'm talking about daylight when when the darkness is done, and you come to the morning about, you know, what about seven o'clock around here now. There is something so amazing about daybreak because you can be going. Everything's worse at night. If you're sick, you're going to feel sicker in the night. If you got pain, you're going to have more pain. Yeah. If you're struggling spiritually, it's going to be worse in the night. But there's this moment when the horizon breaks open with light. I think we're actually having the average American begin to pray that's never prayed in their life because they're seeing what's really going on. I in believe it. I believe it. And I don't think that it's hidden like they want it to be. Remember last week we talked about that witchcraft persuasion they have that if they say it, if the media puts it out there, then yes, you must believe it because this is the gospel truth. And my mom and dad were that way. And yeah. and back, I remember that whatever Walter Cronkite said or you know whoever it was at the time, boy, that was it. Well, there was a time that they never shared their opinion. It was just facts. And now everything is opinion. Well, it's it's so biased. Um, yeah. But I do believe that that there's something getting ready. There's there's a break coming, guys. There's a break coming to where – and, you know, I, I kind of look back on when God brought me out of my darkness. You know, I'd prayed that December and said, oh, God. I, you know, I was at the bottom of the barrel, and I just I said, God, you're all almighty. Is there anything you can do to help me? You know, just crying out, is there anything in the whole, everything that you know that you could do to help me? And then when I woke up that one morning, and it, for the first time in my life, felt like 
darkness had broken. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it was a process. I've talked about the process God took me through to bring me out of all that. But I feel like because we've been in this hellhole in our country for years and years, and nobody's realized it, it's been, that I think God is exposing it. I think as he's exposing it, people that, like you said, may have never prayed much before, may have never thought, well, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing going on, you know, we'll, we'll just keep on going. I think there are people all over the place that God is showing things to I think they're praying like they never prayed before, and I think they're going to come out of the highways and byways and vote because they recognize that this what what is being presented um, by the Democrats is socialism. Yeah. And if if you're our age or older, you know well what socialism and communism does. Now the younger younger generations, I think a lot of them have been taught in colleges by these these uh, infiltrators that are in their. Um, that are, are teaching in the colleges that, that, Hey, this is the way you want to go. This is the way this is a good. So they've got this new enlightenment. They think on something that's really old, that doesn't work that they think, Hey, yeah. this is good they stuff. They cannot point to a single place on, on, on the planet that this has ever worked. Oh. And so, uh, I just wanted to encourage everybody and where, uh, what God reminded me of was in, I want to read a few verses in Psalm 30. Um, because you know, when, uh, when the morning breaks, Mike, darkness flees. Mm -hmm. It can't stand the true light. That's that's God's creative light coming forth. You know, there's all kinds of lights. It says that, that Satan can appear as an angel of light. And boy, we've seen a lot of that. We've seen a lot of things that look like light, but it's really darkness. And so, But there's nothing like when that morning breaks. And, and that's what I keep feeling like God is saying, there's morning coming. Not M-O-U-R-N. <laughs> But M O R N, morning is coming. Yes. Um, and you know when I, um, when I came out of that, the most automatic thing that poured out of me was thanksgiving, praise, worship. When you have a morning breakthrough, I mean that's just what your soul does. And and you know that there's rejoices. in another psalm it says, "Set my soul out of prison so I can praise your name." So I want to read in Psalm 30. It says, uh, "I'm going to skip a few verses." But it says, "I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive." that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And I'll go down a few verses. It says, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. He is our helper. <laughs> thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. See, that's that's what we're made to do. Mm -hmm. We're made to praise him. We're made to worship him. All creation worships him. That's why, like, there's, you know, people go into this Mother Earth stuff, and they say, oh, all these spirits and nature and stuff. It's just it's just the resonance of God where he is still in his creation. I know. Well, the book of uh, Romans warns us that they'll they'll reject the Creator, but worship the, that which yeah, is created. We're not supposed to to worship that worship, but everything is supposed to worship Him. And so, in all that everybody's talking about, in everything that everybody's saying, that boy, this is upon us. Look at the new world order. Look at where they brought us. I have always sensed that God was going to show forth His power, and then later on, we know we're going to have. Revelation is going to come to pass. There's going to be a battle of Armageddon. There's going to be all these things. But but God has always had me praying for a period of time where his power would be shown, his glory would be shown, so many will get saved. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're, we're, is going on right now, is we're preparing for a harvest of souls. And in that process, the bride is going to be transformed. The, the bride's going to be made without spot or wrinkle. And right now, guys... For everybody that thinks this is the very end, do you know what would happen if, if Jesus said, okay, I'm coming after my bride? Look at what the shape we're all in. I'm talking me. I'm talking, look at, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know that I was in such bad shape. 
And I think there's other people probably just now seeing the shape that they're in. They're seeing the condition our nation's in. They're saying, how did we get to this place? You know, used to, you, you, you would never have heard any of the stuff that's coming out now. But now you're hearing all these things that have been done. And so, so we're at that time of making a decision. We are, are we going to stand against this evil? Are we going to stand here and stand so that God's will can be done and his praises can be sung, he can be worshipped, that, that it'll be shouted from the rooftops, the hidden things, so that we can take authority and say, we're not going to stand for this anymore. You know, I've been doing this for many years, and I've been standing and saying, I forbid this human trafficking. I don't know how, Father, you're going to get it stopped, but I, as an ambassador of yours here on this earth, I forbid it. I command it to stop. I command the satanic worship to stop and the torture of children children and mind control and you know what god's showing it to everybody and then we have the responsibility as his people to to expose this wickedness we're not supposed to turn our head and and say well i'm just gonna act like i didn't see that you know what that does it perpetuates the evil and i understand i understand people being frightened at the thought of, man, if I stand against this, not only will Satan come after me and he'll attack me, but you know, they may send some of these people after me or they may, they may audit me or they may do, because that's exactly what they do. Yeah. But you've got to understand this, this point. It was something that Marianne Brown came and said to us, and, and she didn't know anything about us this time we'd seen her. Uh, she was preaching, and she walked over and just pointed at us, and she said, anytime anybody stands up for God, he will stand up for them. And boy, that was that was like she just poured cold water on thirsty souls, uh, because that's what we were seeing. But it was so against anything anybody ever said. You know, I had a had a woman one time that's supposed to be an evangelist that had been a, a witch previously and got saved, and she came through and she was speaking at this place. And and the whole time, in a couple of days, I got to meet with her a couple of times. And the whole time, she kept saying to me, "Now, you know, Mary, people go crazy when they look at this stuff." You know, you don't want to look at this, Mary, because, you know, people, I knew this man, he lost his mind. And I think if somebody just focused on darkness, that's a real possibility. But I was sitting there saying, you do understand God showing me this, right? You do know that he gives me a sound mind. You do know that he's strong enough to sustain me and my family if we stand here and do what he's telling us to do. And he did. So for every person that's a whistleblower, for every person that's thinking, well, I don't want to look at this, we'll get attacked. Cover your doors with the blood of Jesus. Ask God to show you anything you need to change. Ask him to forgive every sin and stand firm. Be courageous and say, I will not go into the night. I am not going to hide my head, but I'm going to stand here and I'm going to shout from the rooftops this evil that it's going to stop and our God will be praised and thanked. That's right. That's where our position needs to be right now. And I tell you, we've got some people out there that I hear from, and they are right on it. We've got more powerful prayer partners. And and listen, they're in their communities, all states across this nation and around the world. world. They're standing there asking God to forgive the sins of of their city, forgive the sins of their neighborhoods. And you think that doesn't rock the kingdom of darkness? Let me tell you something. The kingdom of darkness is rocking and reeling and going nuts right now. Kind of like... You know, on a small sense, when God brought me out of that bondage, I want you to know that the demons were fleeing. There was such such an anointing that God broke me free with that it so rattled that people in that town couldn't even handle it. It was just like everything went nuts because the facade, this, this you know, half-truth life we were all living got exposed. So think what will happen as we're praying over this nation and we're standing here and saying, we're not putting up with this anymore. You're not going to have this nation. You know, we'll be a sheep nation, thank you. This is going to return to God. Why do you think God set that up the way that he did for this, this new Supreme Court justice? You think that was of the enemy when she's going to stand for life? When we've got a president that everybody in the world's coming against him, even Christians are coming and speaking things against him, and he's got the strength to stand there and take this so he can proclaim life to little babies in the womb? I mean, this, you know, it's, this is a no-brainer to me. And I, I don't care what somebody says about him. I know he's not perfect. But, you know, God will take anyone that he can use. It's just really hard for God to find somebody to stand against this. Yeah. 
It's very difficult. First, you have to see it. Then you have to have the courage to stand against it. It's not easy to find. If we hadn't had someone that had a bunch of money, he couldn't even have run for president because it's, it's millions and millions that all these um, people you know, go toward their causes, people that want abortion, people that want the Planned Parenthood, people that want all these things that are against God's word. They pour millions and millions into that. So if he hadn't had money, do you see what, can't you just see God at every point of this? He's having mercy on us. Yep. He's having mercy on the ones that have said, God, I'm going to stand here. You know, if we die, we die. But I'm telling you, I'm going down fighting that, that there's got to be a nation that can stand and help other nations that are in bondage. And I believe that's what God's got for us. Now, is there a whole bunch of stuff planned and a whole bunch of stuff? They, yeah, but you know what? They had guillotines way back when I first started looking at this. But you haven't seen them chopping anybody's head off. You know why? Because our God can stop it. You know how long they have had those. Randy uh, Conway just released a new video and where he does one of his poems. He has where they were testing a guillotine way back when it was only black and white film here in America. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's part of the plan. We know yeah. it. But you, if anybody knew what was going on underground and how many things got it blocked and stopped and, and uh, blocked travel and did all kinds of stuff, then you would sit and say, how amazing is our God? How great is our God? He's greater than anything. All of the enemy all combined, all of hell, all of the demons, all the minions all combined can't stand up to him at all. Did you hear that thunder? Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a big clap of lightning over on this, through the oh, one window. Well, big thunder, guys. God is um, saying, yes, that's right. But, but it's the truth. And, and everybody is, sees so much of what the news says, and they see so much of the naysayers, and it's so big and so loud. Well, let God speak like he just did. He can speak through the thunder. Yes, he can. And we need to realize that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing on, on uh, television with mainstream media is all what, what I would consider counterintelligence. It's to, it's to silence those that have been awakened by God. It's to silence the truth. It's to, it's to uh, basically to obfuscate what, what God's trying to reveal by, you know, there, there's been so many times there has been stuff that dealt with the left that they just won't cover. But, I mean, <laughs> well, it, anybody to... <laughs> on the conservative side blows their nose wrong, and it, it's, it's headlines for days. And uh, we, we, you know, this, is, this is why we need to see this, uh, put a stop to this. And once we, once we have awakened to their tactics and begin calling them on it, uh, then in fact, there was one here uh, that uh, tried to push the whole white supremacist thing on Trump again mm -hmm. and ask him at a press conference after he has answered it 4,900 times. And social media had enough of it, and they attacked him on it. He attacked back, saying, well, I have a right to ask, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, you might... For something like that was news when he has already declared them a terrorist organization. Oh, they bring up anything because they'll bring they just... up anything over and over and over again because that's it. it it's like that's what they're programmed to do. Mm -hmm. And and guys, we we need to wake up to this. God, we we are turning a corner, and it is time to press in like never before. Now, several things that God has given me, and then I kind of call this a a, uh, a call to the remnant uh, spiritual warriors. We need to press in. This is not a time to back down. We're turning the corner, mm -hmm. but we need Keep to press rolling. in. Uh, in Luke eighteen, in Luke eight seventeen, this is one of the promises of Jesus: "For nothing is secret that not, will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light." And this is one of the things that Mary and I have been teaching, and and just giving a, a clarion call to ever since, uh, even before the two thousand sixteen election. I was on the yeah, Hagman years report. before that. I was on the Hagman report before the election, saying, "Listen, we need to ask God. Let everything hidden be revealed." And Mary, boy, what a wild ride this has been! Mm -hmm. I mean, all of a sudden, WikiLeaks comes out, and this comes out, and that comes out, and they're trying, they're scrambling, doing everything that they can do. And let me tell you something: the WikiLeaks made the left so mad that in, in one of the briefings that came out, that Hillary Clinton's suggestion was, "Let's just drone him." She wanted to send a Hellfire missile on his house, even though he was sitting in a sovereign nation, just to, to stop that because they, they didn't know what to do with how to, how to stop the leaks. And, guys, we need to continue praying that, that all the hidden would be revealed and that nothing 
uh, the mainstream media or anyone can do can hide the truth. The truth needs to be come, come out and justice needs to be done, mm-hmm. whether it's yes, from it uh, those that are moving righteously in the Justice Department or in a just and a holy God well, says, you know, if you're not going to take care of it, I'm going to take care of it. And he will. He will. And the second thing that we're beginning to awaken to is something called counterintelligence. Now, that that's what the, you know, if, if, the, if the truth comes out, you bombard it with 500 different lies to try to either discredit it or to change the conversation. And my, how they have not done that. But let me tell you something, guys. The counterintelligence of the deep state, the remnant have discernment, and they're not buying it anymore, which no. is frustrating the snot out of them. That's overriding that old um, persuasion. It that, is. That- it is it, because there was there was that there was an occult edge of persuasion that was going on. Uh, the second thing is that the technocracy, and it's actually a, tech, a technocratic oligarchy. Technocracy is where they're trying to use technology and science to bring, but an they're oligarchy. They're censoring. <laughs> I mean, they're censoring everything. At the same time, in my first book, in the Shiner Director, I, I deal with an oligarchy, which uh, by definition can be a small handful of wealthy individuals, families, and corporations now basically control most aspects of society because they control the money. And uh, guys, this is especially true with uh, the technocracy elite, social media, search engines, and other platforms are now censoring information, attempting to illegally influence an election. Forget about Russian meddling or Chinese meddling. This is Silicon Valley meddling, trying to change the outcome of an election, which is highly illegal. And guys, they have done things like, uh, and some of this is under the guise of fact-checking, uh, which is actually more about their agenda than the truth because they'll look to their liberal people to do this. And just to show you just the, the, the disparaging, in fact, I think they're going to be called uh, before Congress to answer to some of this. They had a, a, a conservative news media guy that has a long track record of being rock solid. A liberal news media edited what he said to make it say just the opposite. He called them on it. He contacted Twitter. It was days and days and days before they shut that down. Something came out that was very possibly true about the the Bidens. Within minutes, minutes, they shut it down to include shutting down links from the third largest and oldest newspaper in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, this, this, is, this, this, this boggles the mind. And uh, the, this whole technocratic thing is all about slowly not only controlling information controlling the masses but slowly building the beast system under our very noses and guys we must seek the assistance of heaven to judge these endeavors of darkness and to bring them in the light of day and to awaken the masses to what they're doing uh and when no some of this besides social media and all that they're they're now pushing for digital currency do you know what that means that you can't go to a yard sale and buy something without the federal government knowing it. You can't hand five dollars for, you know, a, a used gym swing or, or or anything like that. And it will come to the place that even if you would you would sell something used, the IRS is going to want their fee. It's it's Big Brother getting every aspect because they want to control. They want to know if you buy a cup of coffee or not. They want to know every aspect because the more that they know, not only are they controlling your money and they can make it disappear with a push of a button. Well, and they've already got places like clubs that you have to have a card to buy there. Yeah. And even if you pay cash, they're still going to know everything you everything buy. Everything you buy. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, it's been set up though forever. This isn't like yeah. like something new that they're bringing. This has been set up forever and there's nothing that I see that makes me think it's going to happen today. No. I think God's getting ready to show himself powerful. Yeah, that that's why that's why we pray and we we you know assist on using cash whenever possible and all these different things. If we because part of their religious belief system if you will and dealing with karma and everything else. If they try to implement it and we resist it, they got to back us off because then they got to try to indoctrinate us to where we accept it because if we don't accept it, it comes back on them. And so that's, that's why we, we need to understand, we need to pray, we need to resist. Uh, the third thing is the difference between the awakened remnant and the woke left. Now, uh, the woke population, guys, more resemble 
a violent sleepwalker than someone who has awakened from the techno sorcery slumber of Babylon. And you, you see a lot of this, they'll, they'll call them the woke left. They scream, they're violent, they'll do everything but reason. It's, it's like their, their, their ability to reason has been shut down. And guys, we need to pray for these guys. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> what they're following, there was a guy named Sal Alinsky, and I, I've dealt with this before, and, and uh, of how to use these things. And you want to see how the left and the elite feel about these people? And this is Sal Alinsky's own words. They're useful idiots. That's exactly what's happening on our streets today. They're burning down cities and those that are really in power driving it consider them useful idiots and they're burning down their own neighborhoods. They're burning down. You know, how can you say that you stand for black lives matter when you're destroying black businesses? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's unreasonable. Uh, and so guys, we, we need to pray that God would truly awaken them that they're seeing that they're being used or nothing but cannon fodder for the communist revolution that's going on in America today. Uh, and last night we, we, we saw a recent video of an Antifa member conducting a pagan ritual on the streets yeah. in America while eating a heart. Mm -hmm. It was very gross. It was very, very gross. Mm -hmm. And after and after doing this incantation and eating in a heart, he was running around saying that his body was on fire, talking about the power of this, of this entity, and he was calling on the god of chaos. Yeah, he was, the gods. He the gods, gods of chaos. Of chaos yeah. And guys, this this is this is very important. Now, this is something that I've dealt with in the Go Therefore conference and also uh, the last Trump virtual conferences that are going on right now. A truth that's revealed in Genesis 1-2 reveals two major agents of darkness in the kingdom of God. And in the Hebrew, it's tohu and bohu. And I don't want to get into all the grammatical things about this, but uh, this the use of those two words together violate Hebrew grammar. In fact, we don't really even know what bohu means. There's no there's no relative thing to it, so they kind of tried to apply the Greek to it and everything else. And I believe it's two entities that it's kind of like the Nehesh of Genesis three one that the that, that that word became known known as serpent, but originally I believe it was the name of that seraph that came into the garden. I think that bohu and tohu literally can be translated confusion and chaos. Now, why is this so important? You see, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was decimated. Tohu and Bohu are doing their thing. The Spirit of God comes in and stops it. And then when Almighty God came and God was speaking words of authority over Adam and Eve, when he told them to replenish, when you look at the historical etymology, I get into this in, in the kingdom priesthood, that Adam was given a staff of authority. That replenish meant not only to be consecrated as a priest, but also to be war armed as a warrior. But when you look at Malay in the Hebrew and just take apart the, the individual Hebrew letters, it can be translated this way, the shepherd's staff that can stop chaos. They're calling to the gods of chaos. Mm -hmm. When Jesus rose from the dead, he said, all authority is given unto me. That's right. And there, there's a reason why he said all, because not only did he come with the authority of the second Adam, when he rose from the dead, he had the authority of the first Adam. And in our shepherd staff of authority, we as under shepherds have under King Jesus, mm -hmm. we have regained the authority to stop chaos. Oh, preach it, darling. That's why we need to, within, within the first heaven realities, we need to daily begin binding up confusion and chaos over our lives, over our communities, over our nation, and we need to begin seeking the face of the Father to send warring angels to war against confusion or chaos or tohu and bohu in the second heaven that they cannot release their work because every violent communist revolution, everything that they, when they have ter overturned governments and, and discarded and cause dystopian type situations for the public, it has always been on the heels of confusion and chaos. Guys, we need to bind it up. We need to seek the face of heaven. We need to seek the yeah. face of God. Father, send warring angels right now to begin 
stopping and binding yeah. up confusion and chaos yeah, in the streets. We ask forgiveness for the sins that have brought forth these these entities. Father, forgive the rituals that are being done. Yes, we plead and, the blood um, of Jesus over every single ritual. And forgive the sins of the people that yes. um, that are in the government and in the media that are complicit with all of this agenda. Father, forgive their sins and break occult power to work through them. Make it impossible for them to be a puppet for the enemy, yes. to speak, to move, to hide things. Um, and we just believe, Father, that, that you are bringing justice right now. As a matter of fact, Mike, um, when I woke up this morning, it was a similar feeling that I had once God told me that Hillary had reached the pinnacle of her power. And I thought, I'm going to be rejoicing. Okay, she's not going to win this election. Uh, I am going to just, but you know what? It wasn't, that wasn't what I felt. What I felt was like this solemnness, this, oh, because then, then you see the big picture. You know, so many yeah. times God sees everything we don't, and so we're, we're constantly trying to figure out, God, why are you doing it this way? Why are you not stopping this? Why are you? And, and the big picture is this. These people, without a miracle of God and their souls are saved, They've reached the pinnacle of anything they were going to do in their life and what they have ahead of them, unless they are saved. A true salvation experience is eternity of torture in hell. Yes. And there's this solemnness that comes. You know, you're, you're doing warfare. You're, you're seeing, oh, man, these people have got this horrible, evil agenda. They're hurting children. They're doing this. They're doing that. And you think there's going to be this great shout of victory. But what I believe happens is once God says, okay, it's getting ready to turn. You know, my judgment's going to hit this wickedness. Then you start seeing, oh, the wasted lives. Yeah. The, the, the lives that God had plans for every, every child, I believe, that there was a, a, a plan that God had and that, that none were unimportant. And here, look what Satan has done to these lives. Yeah. In every case, just look. And so that's that's what I woke up to this morning after I'd had this, you know, I'd heard from God on what was going on. But, you know, God never takes delight in the destruction of the wicked. No, he doesn't. So, so don't, I don't want you to fear or get, get upset if we don't see right away any kind of prosecution. Because, I mean, it, it, that would take a move of God to do that. And I pray that they do because there needs to be justice in courts and things that people can see. But know this, guys. There's judgment coming on the wicked. There is. Guys, we need to understand that this fight is not a political fight. It's a spiritual fight. No, one. It, it's not. And we are fighting so that the world will not be set on fire with the communist revolution to establish a one-world government. Guys, we are fighting for the souls of our nations and freedom not only to preach the gospel, but to live our faith in the public square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, heaven is hearing and moving. We are turning a corner. There is a shift in the spirit, and those with spiritual discernment can feel it. It is time to press and take ground for the kingdom and then to move forward in winning hearts and minds to walk with Jesus in spirit and in truth. That's where we are. Mm hmm. Now, Father, I just ask that you would empower every remnant, Father, wherever they are in the world, Father, to, to have that uh, special anointing on them to pray and to intercede and to do spiritual warfare and to, Father, to position themselves exactly where they need to be. Father, activate your remnant to enforce your kingdom, to enforce your decrees, to enforce that which you want done in the earth. And, Father, even more than stilling the fires of hell, your greatest desire is that there would be a great harvest come into the kingdom. And, Father, yes. we ask that, we the, that, that the woke would become the awakened and see their need for Jesus. And, Father, that they would run into the arms of the living God. Yes. And that they would surrender to him and cast off the works of darkness, cast off the works of violence. Father, continue to turn the tide. Father, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on this planet and in every life. And, Father, I also speak into every situation of every remnant member. Father, wherever the enemy has tried to creep in, Father, turn them back. Yes. Bring victory. Bring yes. wholeness. Change situations that could not be changed. Father, change them 
by your power and solely for your glory and let your name be reverenced among both the remnant and the population we ask. In Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The kingdom priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual, you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the kingdom of God in the Bible? And who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the principalities' wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end-time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The kingdom priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Power up now!